What is up guys, my name is Andrew and welcome to Space Camp, the series where I explain how to do stuff in Space Engineers. Whether you're a new player or an existing player coming back after a long time maybe not playing Space Engineers, this series is going to have something for you. Now this is going to be a reboot of the series we did about a year ago, uh, called the same thing, Space Camp. Uh, and the reason we're rebooting it is because since that time a lot of the things that I've explained have changed. There have been major updates and some of those need to be addressed, uh, otherwise people are going to go watch those videos and have no clue what I'm talking about. Now the reason I'm deciding to reboot this series is because I've been getting a lot of comments from people who have been saying that they want to see Space Camp brought back. So we're going to try it again. We're going to we're going to see if we can get a little farther this time than uh, Small Ships, which is where we ended with the last Space Camp series. Now there's going to be one major difference this time around, and that is that I'm going to be alternating difficulty every other episode. So uh, for instance, you have a, a basic episode, which is like this one, and the next episode is going to be more advanced. And then the episode after that will be basic, and the episode after that will be more advanced, and so on and so forth. And hopefully by doing that, this series will be accessible to not only players who are really new to Space Engineers, but also players who have maybe played it for a little bit, but don't understand some of the more advanced concepts like, you know, programmable blocks and timers and sensors. I mean, I have like 500 hours in Space Engineers, and I literally just touched a timer for the first time. So it's not unheard of that people couldn't have not messed with stuff for a long time. So hopefully this this series will be uh, interesting, and you guys will like it, and, and uh, we'll have fun. All right, in this episode, we're going to talk about something that's changed quite a bit since I've last talked about it. And I'd like to go over pretty much everything that's new and everything that you have to look out for uh, in with regards to spawning. So first, we're going to talk about what's in the spawning ship, what you need to uh, be aware of that's on this thing. Then we're going to talk about the progression system that's uh, kind of new and changes things up a little bit. And finally, we're going to talk about some of the first steps you should take once you land in your spawn pod. Alrighty, let's get right into this. Now when you first spawn on Earth and you come down in your drop pod, this is going to be what you're given. And surprisingly, even though it might not look like it, everything that you're going to need to start a fully functioning base is inside this ship. Now for your own convenience and to, to explain what's in here, to show off all the components, I've taken all of the major things in here and I've put it on this nice little line so that we can easily uh, see what it is. So let's see, let's take a look at what you're given to start with. So first you've got a battery. Uh, it's a small battery, but it's full usually when you start and we can see that over here. This one's mostly full It's bit the the lights have been draining it a little bit. So you're given a battery uh, moving along We've got well, you're pretty much your best friend for the next couple hours is the survival kit The survival kits interesting because it's basically a combination between a med bay a refinery and an assembler now if you if you uh, hold F on the survival kit thing it can actually refill your uh, your power down in the bottom left corner and in fact if you've got stuff connected to it It can also refill all of your other stats so your oxygen and your hydrogen But not only that the refinery also has a production tab. Oops, not the refinery the uh, the, the survival kit also has a production tab now as the survival kits really just a starting tool uh, it only has <laughs> very dumbed down capabilities so the only thing that it can refine are ingots and essentially what ingots are is they refine rocks into these basic components. So you have gravel, iron, nickel, and silicon, which can make basic components. You don't see any gold in here, you don't see any silver, no cobalt, none of that stuff, only ingots. Now as the thing can refine all of these things, and ingots as well, uh, it can also do some assembling. So it can assemble your basic tools, and it can also assemble some of your basic components, like steel plates and girders and construction components and all that stuff. So the survival kit is super awesome. Moving along, we have the O2 slash H2 generator, which essentially turns ice into oxygen and hydrogen. Now, on this ship, the, this is actually connected to this so that it can provide you with uh, hydrogen. So you'll see if I do this one, see, the hydrogen doesn't go up because these are not connected. However, if I do it on the ship over here, I believe, nope, maybe on this side. Yeah, over here, you'll see my hydrogen does go up. And the reason it does is because this is the O2 H2 generator. It's got ice. You see right there, and it's also connected to what I just pressed, which is that right there. It's connected via these conveyors. Now, if you want an in-depth tutorial on how conveyors work, I have one from a long time ago with the other Space uh, Camp series, and it's still in date, so I'll post that right now in, in the video so you can see it. Uh, moving along, they give you an ore detector, which is kind of useless. Um, I mean, it can pretty much detect ores that are like right under your feet or just like barely around you, because I think it has a range of 50 meters. but I mean, at the very least, you can go ahead and grind this thing down, and uh, it'll be good for your first ship. Uh, you've got an antenna, also good for your first ship. Uh, you've got uh, some thrusters, which are only really useful for slowing you down. And then in addition to these thrusters, they give you a beacon. Now, some things I didn't include on that line are uh, they give you a timer block, and they give you a cargo container down there, 
and they also give you a parachute hatch up there. But those aren't really that that important. All right, in addition to the things on the line as well, we have some stuff inside. Now, if you want to see a, uh, the entire ship, you can press this button right here, show connected inventories. Or if you just want to see the current inventory, you can press this one. But we're going to press that one. We can see that they give us some ice, they give us some hydrogen in the form of a bottle, and they give us some oxygen also in the form of a bottle. Now, this hydrogen bottle is really helpful because it basically makes it so that you don't have to go and refill your hydrogen. So see that hydrogen in the bottom left? That goes down as I start to fly and stuff. And once that reaches zero, my jetpack turns off and I can no longer use it. So we have to go and recharge. However, if you have a hydrogen bottle like the one they give you, you don't have to refill that manually. I think you have like 10, 10 refills or maybe five or something in between <laughs> refills that, that it'll automatically refill you so you don't have to actually come back here. So that can, that can be a lifesaver if you're going on long journeys. All right, those are the things that you start with in your spawn ship. That's everything you need to survive. Let's talk about progression a little bit. So one of the new concepts they've added, and this was a couple months ago that they added this, is progression. Uh, you start with all the basic stuff and you have to work your way up. If we press G, we can actually see that and go over to the progression tab. This is the progression tree. So everything that's like not grayed out is stuff that you currently can build. And everything that's grayed out is stuff that you can't build. Now it works like a normal tree. So if something's right here grayed out, you can just follow the track back to something that you need to build in order to be able to build that. Once you build this thing right here, the basic assembler, it's going to unlock these new things that you can build. In fact, it won't only unlock these, it'll unlock these, it'll, well, it won't unlock these yet, but it'll unlock this. These ones right here have another requirement and that's going to be the interior light. So in order to build any of these things, you're gonna to need to build the interior light first. Looking down, it looks like the tree is pretty much all like that. It's everything's got like a prerequisite in order to build special round blocks, we're going to have to build a single block first. In order to build all this interior stuff, like windows, we're going to have to build an interior wall. In order to, yeah, see? <laughs> if you want to build an actual refinery, like the one that was originally in the game, you're going to have to first build a basic refinery. So that's pretty important. The whole reason for all of this is to make the game easier to comprehend for new users. And I think it does. I think it does a good job of kind of easing you into the, uh, the, the, uh, the stuff you can do. Because when you look at blocks... It's, it's kind of a small list at the start, but it eventually gets huge. There's a lot of blocks you can build in Space Engineers. So that's basically the gist of progression. Now, uh, one other thing I want to mention is if you're in a faction, like a, create a faction called something, <laughs> you can actually share your progress with another user. So if I had an NPC right here, I can share my progress with them. So if I've, if I've got like a bunch of stuff unlocked and my buddy doesn't, I can actually go over to him, share my progress. He'll also have the stuff unlocked. So, uh, and the way you do that is K, factions, you can create, leave, etc., etc. You'll also see all the undiscovered. This is kind of going off on a tangent, but you also see like all the undiscovered stuff from the new update. Uh, it's all there. You haven't discovered them, so they, they don't show up. All right, that's basically everything you need to know about progression. It's a pretty simple system, but it's new, so I wanted to talk about it. Uh, now let's talk about some of the first steps that I might take when I land on a planet with my nice ship. We're going to go outside for this. We're not going to do it inside the already functional base because I want to show you how we, uh, you know, start our own base. So. Let's go ahead and take a look at this thing. Let's pretend we just landed. All right, we've just landed safe and sound. One of the first things I like to do is get a nice base set up. And by base, I mean just like a literal, literal block plane <laughs> so that I can place my stuff on. Unfortunately, we need some steel plates. Now, if you remember from when I was showing stuff off in there, uh, we can make steel plates from our beautiful survival kit. So what we're going to do is we're going to go aim at either of these two things and press K. That's going to bring us into this screen. Let's go to production and let's... Check out what we can make. We can make some steel plates, which are exactly what we need. So let's queue some of those up. If you want to queue things up faster, you can hold control and that'll do 10 at a time. You can hold shift and that'll do 100 at a time. And you can hold control shift, that'll do 1000 at a time. We're obviously not going to need this many quite so early. I mean, you can always have more steel plates, but you know, we don't need that many, but it's fine. We'll leave it there. But in order to make steel plates, it looks like we need some iron. And if you remember as well, we can make some iron with our ingots. So let's queue up some ingots as well. And in fact, I'll just queue up, I don't know, like a billion of those. And we'll put that right there because it's like a hierarchy. So the, th the farthest top left is what goes first. And then it goes like that until, yeah, until they're done, pretty much. And then if you see here, in order to make ingots, it looks like we need stone. And that right there is how early game works. What we need is a lot of stone. So we're going to go to our drill, which the game gracefully provides us with. If you don't have a drill in your hotbar down here, what you want to do is press G, go down to character tools, and then drag the hand drill all the way down to one of your slots. doesn't matter which one. In fact, you can do multiple as well. No, maybe you can't do multiple. 
I, I misspoke. You can only do one. But just drag it down to one of your slots, and then you have your drill. Coolio. Now, I've already made a little hole for us so I can demonstrate, you know, how to mine stone. Uh, now, there are two ways to mine. You can right-click or left-click mine. Now, when you right-click mine, it mines super fast. However, you don't get any materials from it. So it's really made, me meant to dig tunnels and stuff. But when you left-click mine, you mine kind of slower, but you get materials. You get some of that good old stone. So what, what you're going to want to do really early game is just keep mining, grab a lot of stone. As much stone as you can, in fact. And just keep bringing it back here so that those ingots can process. And, and they'll do it automatically as long as you have the, the ingots queued up. Uh, now one thing to note when you're mining for stone is that when you mine kind of topside, you get these very small... A little bit of lag there. You get these very small rocks of stone right here, which we can we can go and collect. However, when you mine a little bit deeper down... Let me turn press L to turn on my light. When you mine a little bit deeper down, you start getting larger rocks. And that could be way more efficient. So if we look over here, we'll see that we have, we have first, we have some small stones, which are like a 96 and 112, but then we have some larger ones, which are like 367. So sometimes I find that it's worth it to, instead of spending so much time mining up here, do that right click mining, which mines faster. So you can mine yourself a nice little hole down here and then just mine your stone where you get the bigger rocks and it'll be way more efficient for you. You'll save so much time doing that. So just grab all that stone. As much as we can, at least. Eventually your inventory will be full, but we have we have high inventory settings on this tutorial world, at least. And then we're going to go ahead and plop that into here. So press F on the big yellow square to plop things inside other things, and just drag it over. There you go, you'll see it started producing stuff. Now what we can do as well is we can swap that over so it starts making that. We can swap that over, swap that over, swap that over. Um, you don't have to do this manually all the time. If this runs out of stuff to do, it'll automatically start doing the next thing over in the list. So, but you see, we have some steel plates. Or, oh, see, it just did it. We have some steel plates. Okay, now that we've got some basic stuff being made here, we can actually grab that. Press F and then just shift click whatever was in there. So we can, boop, shift click that. I mean, we can also control click, which will give us 10 at a time, but shift click is what gives us some all at the same time, or all of them uh, at once. Now, I like to separate my early game into three basic steps. So we have base, then we have power. Well, four basic steps base, power, production and then transfer, and I'll go over those uh, individually. So first we have base. What we're gonna do is we're going to make ourselves a nice little base ground area that we can use to plop our stuff onto. It doesn't have to be that big, but I like making it like roughly this size to start. It's not too crazy, but you know, it's, it's, it's not too modest either. Now, if you wanted to, you could technically go around to all of these, each and every one of them with 25 steel plates and build them up just like this. But we don't need to. The only reason you would need to do that is for armor purposes and for aesthetic purposes. Uh, but since we don't have any meteors coming down and since we don't have any enemies around us, there's no need to waste all those steel plates doing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that. I'm going to get, get back my steel plates and just keep it like this. It's fine like that. Eventually, usually I put them together because or like I, I weld them up because I like the aesthetic. But uh, for now, save yourself the steel plates. Just leave them like this. All right, that's the base part. Now time for the power part. So as power goes in uh, early game Space Engineers, we have two options. We can either do the wind turbine or we can do the solar panel or a combination of both. Wind turbine works if you're kind of a little higher and you have a lot of room to go up. The solar panel works if you have a very good sunny area, which we actually we actually do. This is a pretty good area uh, for sun. There's no There's no major blockages or anything like that. So we could do either. I think what we're going to do, though, is if, uh, we're going to do the wind turbine, because these are more new than the solar panel is. Solar panels have been around for, for ages. We'll do the wind turbine. So for a wind, wind turbine, we're going to want to build up a little bit. I don't know how high we want to build up. We'll go over this way more in detail in a future episode uh, that's going to be all about power. But for now, you know, we'll just, <laughs> we'll just build it. Um, looks like we're going to need some interior plates. Now, one thing with building, and I cover this in another episode of Space Busters that talks about... Uh, pretty much everything that's basic about the game. In fact, I'll link that right now because that's a really good video if you're really new. Um, but the the bottom most item on the build list is the thing that you need one of to place this. That probably makes no sense. But see how the bottom most item is interior plates? That means I can't place this item without a single interior plate in my inventory. Let's compare that to light armor blocks. See, I, I can place light armor blocks because I have steel plates in my inventory. But if I didn't have those in my inventory, I could no longer place light armor, or, yeah, light armor blocks. As long as I have at least one in my inventory, I can place these. 
and that's how building works, basically. So you guys know the drill. You know, mine stone as you need to. Go to production, make make some interior plates, and kablamo. You can go ahead and place these things. Let's put one right here. Usually if you're doing, uh, like, wind power, you're going to want more than one of these things. So let's go ahead and place a second one as well. Hovering over it with the welder out shows you exactly what's needed to build this thing up. So let's go ahead and grab all those materials and build these up. All right, after welding those things up, we now have power to our base. But just where do you think that power is going right now that nothing's being used? Well, it's actually getting wasted because we don't have any sort of battery to store the power. And this is where the third part of our plan comes in, or of our early, early base setup. Now, in order to make a battery, we need a, a different component that we've never seen before. And it's called power cells. Uh, we need 80 of them, in fact. Now, unfortunately, if we go and check this out, check out our production, we can't actually make power cells. They're not here. Well, this is where production comes in, because in order to make power cells, you need a basic assembler. Let's press G and go to basic assembler. We need to make a basic assembler so that we can start making some of these more advanced components. So let's place a basic assembler. And in fact, while we're at it, let's place a basic refinery as well. Now, when you're making these, make sure that their yellow components, their yellow pieces, connect to each other. So the way we placed our one right here was the yellow piece was like right there. So for our, our refinery, we want our yellow piece to be like that. So the yellow pieces are kind of like kissing a little bit. Let's go ahead and do whatever whatever stone mining and uh, refining and assembling we need to do to get the materials that we need to make these things, and let's construct them. Okay, with those two machines now constructed, we now have the third part of our early base building plan complete. That's our production. So we now have a basic assembler and a basic refinery. Now the good thing about the basic refinery when compared to the uh, survival kit over here is that the basic refinery can refine things like iron and like cobalt. Not like this one can. This one can only make ingots out of stone. But this one can take actual raw iron and raw cobalt and raw, what else? Nickel, silicon, etc, etc. It can take that and turn it into materials. And the main good thing about refining actual raw materials other than, you know, a refining stone like it does over there is that it gives you so many more ingots than the survival kit does. So this is a way to start ramping up your production. And in fact, this is the beginning of the end of mining for rock. So if you're tired of mining for rock already, don't worry. You're not going to have to do it for much longer because now that you have this thing, you'll be mining for actual things like iron and like, uh, and like other stuff. Let's check out what these new things can do. If we go to production, we'll see our basic assembler is set up and we can actually make power cells. We can make large steel tubes. These are new things. Bulletproof glass for windows. Some, maybe some radio components for, uh, for antennas. Even some medical components. Now, medical components are a little bit weird. If you want to try and make a medical component, you're not going to be able to because you actually need silver. And the basic refinery can't refine silver. <laughs> you need an actual refinery to refine things like silver and gold and like uranium and platinum. So, <laughs> so yeah, don't even try to make that medical component unless you have a regular refinery to set those things up. Now that we have the ability to make the power cells that are required for our battery, let's go ahead and weld this thing up. Okay, now that the battery is built, all the excess power from our two power things right here will go into the battery. Not only that, but Space Engineers is actually very generous when you build a battery, and they give you a, a, a slot of power for free. Uh, so if we actually look in here, we already have some power inside here that's stored that we didn't create with any of these. It just gave it to us for free! So this is really good early game because it might allow you to be able to use these machines simultaneously. When these two can't really provide enough power for them to both be used, this thing might be able to pick up the slack, which is, which is pretty nice. Now, in the process of building some of this stuff, maybe sometimes you might get tired of mining and you might decide you, you want to grind down some of these things. Now, it's totally okay to grind down most of the ship because you're not going to be flying it again later unless you, well, unless you want to fly it again later. But you can totally grind down most of the ship. However, there are a couple things that you need to not grind down at all uh, while, while you're doing stuff. And one of those things is the battery. Once you grind that down, you lose power, which means you lose the ability for the O2H generator to work and you lose the ability for the survival kit to work. So don't grind down your battery until you're totally done with this ship. Uh, don't grind down your survival kit because it's your only method of getting materials. You don't want to grind this down until the end. Uh, and then don't grind down your O2H2 generator because it gives you some of that good, good hydrogen and oxygen from here. The other thing you want to watch out for is you don't split the grid. Sometimes when you destroy some of these blocks down here or some of these, if two blocks, for instance, uh, split, and I'll show you that in a second. 
Look at that. I'm going to split the grid right here. Look, that will fall right there. You don't want to do that in the middle of your ship because your ship's going to turn into a bunch of pieces. So be careful not to split the grid uh, on some of the major components like these things. Uh, also, you don't want to destroy this connector right here because if you do that, it's going to mess up stuff. Oh, yeah, and don't destroy your landing gears. It, unless your landing gears are not... Like, if you have at least one green landing gear, you can destroy the other landing gears. But whenever you destroy that last landing gear that's green, your ship will become disconnected and it might roll down a mountain or anything could happen. You never know. It depends on what angle you're on. Okay, now that that's all over, though, we're done with this ship. We're completely done with it, and it's time to migrate it to the base. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all of the items from here, and we're going to bring them back. And in fact, we're going to start with the survival kit first. So first, take everything out of the survival kit that you're going to need, and then go ahead and grind down the survival kit. Now, we're going to place the survival kit right next to this, I think is a good place. So let's go to here, press G, uh, survival kit, grab that and drag it down to our toolbar. And then we're going to place it right there. Now, the survival kit has two connections, one on each side. So we're just going to go ahead and connect it to the side right there so it's connected to our refinery. And the reason we want the survival kit at this point, by the way, we already have a better refinery and we already have a better uh, assembler, but we want the survival kit for its med bay capabilities. Remember, we can't build any medical components early game because we need a silver refinery, something that will refine silver, uh, which this is not... <laughs> So we want them. We want. We definitely want this for its med bay abilities. Going back to the ship, we're also going to want to take the O2 H2 generator apart and turn that into something on here. Just add it here so that we can get uh, so we can refill our stuff from from the survival kit. Now the thing about the O2 H2 generator is that it's a little bit larger on the main base than it is on the small ship, and by a little bit I mean it's it's way larger. So we're going to have to have a lot more materials to build it. In fact, 110 steel plates compared to this one, which only requires six steel plates. So if you just simply grind this one down, you're not going to have enough materials to build it up right here. You're going to actually go need to, to make more steel plates to, in order to do this. Now, don't worry if it's not built up. You can still get into here just by doing this. Okay, that's built up there. So we can go ahead and destroy most of the ship. I don't think we need anything else on this ship. So let's just go ahead and grind it all up. All right, let's grind up the last few things. We're almost there, and there we go. All right, it's completely gone. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I always get a sense of liberation every time I destroy the spawn ship. It's like you're finally on your own. You have nothing else to, to kind of hold you up. It's all gone. <laughs> you have to rely on yourself from here on out. It's a good feeling. But there we go. This is our early ship. Now, the next things you're going to want to do from here are probably... Uh, you might want to upgrade your power situation because you're going to uh, start running out soon. In fact, I bet you, you know what, I bet you, let me real quick add some ice here. And then let me add all these materials to the uh, basic assembler. Silicon, nickel, oh, those aren't going in. There we go, up here. Silicon, nickel, gravel, and do we have iron? No, we don't. But let me put this in the refinery as well. Now we have iron. <laughs> and let me go ahead and try and make some stuff. I bet you, nope, it's still saying fully recharged, but I bet you if these were both running simultaneously as well as this, or maybe even the second generation of these, the actual assembler and the uh, refinery, I bet you this would say not fully recharged, but fully depleted, which means you'd be losing power. Uh, at that point, you'd want to upgrade this. You're also going to want to upgrade your situations for refinery and assembler. You might want to get a tank for these things. You might want to actually get a med bay. Those are some of the next steps you could take after this. All right, and real quick before we end the episode, if you want to try and find ore so that you can use in your refinery, uh, take out your drill. Now, the drill has a range to detect ore of about 50 meters, which is about... How high is 50 meters? It's not that high. 50 meters is this range. Uh, there. The range from me to that, that thing right there. So it's not really that far. Uh, however, you can usually find ores on planets by big dark splotches in the ground. So I like to fly really high to despawn the grass. And then you can actually see the splotches. So you go in a little closer, it's not as easy. But you go close to the ground and you'll start to see some ore. Oh, I took some damage there. So we got some magnesium right under us. You can see that right there popping up on the map. Uh, let's see if we have anything else. Usually it's not just one thing, by the way. Oh, there we go. Nickel and silicon over there. So we can go ahead and mine for those if we really want to. And we can bring them back to our base. Now, if you're not seeing anything and you're really close to those dark splotches, press H a couple times because there are a couple of options. If you have signals switched off, you won't be able to see anything. So make sure your signals are switched on so you can see that uh, see those. 
And you can, I mean, you'll see if we fly really high, these become really obvious. See how see how obvious that is. And in fact, we can probably see even more if we uh, if we look around. Yeah, see, there's some over there. Let's go and see what that is, just for the sake of uh, for for the sake of showing that these are um, indeed what denote the uh, presence of of materials. Looks like we've got some more silicon and magnesium. It's pretty common that silicon, magnesium, and nickel are together, so I'm not too surprised to see this. Oh, we have some ice down there, too. That's actually really good, since it doesn't look like we're near uh, an ice lake. Okay, well, that's probably a good place to end the episode. This is pretty much everything that you need to know to start out in Space Engineers with that respawn ship. So if there's anything that I missed in early game or anything that you'd want to add, please post in the comments. Also, any questions that you might have uh, would be good to post in the comments. Uh, now, there, there is one problem as well that I do real quick want to mention, and that is if you're trying to respawn in the spawn ship and you have an unlimited speed mod, there's a chance that it's going to crash into the Earth every single time. If you have that specific problem, post in the comments because I do have a solution for you that I don't really want to go over uh, right here because it's a bit more complicated. But uh, but yeah, this episode is a little bit longer than most uh, Space Camp episodes are going to be. Usually I'm going to strive to make them more concise and more, more to the point than this one was. So you have that to look forward to. Uh, but if you guys like that episode, please hit the like button, put your comments and your suggestions down below in the comments section, and I will see you guys in the next episode of Space Camp.